So today on Hindu Voices Podcast, we have Dr. Ulrich Burke. He is the president of the German Association of Homotherapy. He has a lot to say about homotherapy. He's done a lot of research. He works with different universities to prove the efficacy and usefulness of homotherapy and Agni Yotra. And so we will be hearing from him today. So Dr. Burke, how are you and where are you today? Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm fine. I'm in India at a homotherapy place. We call it Homotherapy Goshala in Maheshwa which is at the banks of the Narmada River in Madhya Pradesh, middle of India, you could say. Very nice. So, first I'll ask you, how did you first become interested in Agni Yotra and how long have you been performing it? Uh, yeah, I uh, started to perform Agni Yotra more than 40 years ago. Um, and uh, at that time I was interested in different kinds of healing. So somehow I was introduced to people in Germany who performed Agni Hotra. I saw it, I liked it. And so after some time, uh, after two weeks or so, I started myself. And when was that? That was in the beginning 1979. So you've been doing this a long time? Yeah, more than 40 years. Right. So something obviously must have been very profound or extremely intriguing uh, for you to continue this for 40 years. So what, what exactly did you experience with these initial Agni, Agni Hotras that made you want to pursue this? See, I can't really uh, say that somehow after, uh, I had experienced it, uh, so I thought I should give it a try. Uh, uh, some problem in my mind because my intellect told me, okay, that's a little bit strange, you know, having these uh, four or five elements element fire uh, because according to modern science there are 92 elements and fire is none of them uh, so the intellect was a little bit questioning the whole thing but still I felt some um, I felt somehow uh, drawn to this method so I thought okay for some time experience uh, myself and then I would see and after I had started uh, the question never arise whether I should continue or not. It was just obvious I continued. So you you then took up researching Agniotra. So what what was your background scientifically, and and how did the research begin? Um, yeah. See, um, at that time of science at Constance University, that means I was uh, of course interested in. Uh, the philosophy of science and sciences and um, uh, I had the chance to go with uh, uh, Srivasan Paranjapi, he was the teacher of Agni Hotba Homotherapy who traveled all over the planet. So I had the chance to go with him to different countries also in Eastern Europe and there we met a couple of scientists. And then uh, I got really fascinated by what I said. So one of the scientists, he was a physicist, he said that only a genius could have come up with the Agni Hotta pyramid. He found different mathematical relations in it, for example, the number pi and also the number e, which is the basis of natural log log logarithms. The three steps of the pyramid, they have a relation to the seven chakras uh, of the human body. So. That was really quite astonishing that uh, such uh, top scientists found that very interesting. Another uh, top scientist, uh, that Agni Hotra is as if the sun's energy directly works in the Agni Hotra pyramid. And also he said, you would have to go deep into quantum physics in order to understand that. So that made the whole thing more interesting for me. me Later on, I met more scientists and tried to follow up and uh, to uh, get a clear picture, a scientific view of Agnota also. Did you encounter much opposition from scientists that were saying this is just some sort of, you know, mythological thing or this is, this is not real? Uh, see, of course I did. Uh, even now, although it is uh, less, I hear that. Uh, but... In terms 
of science, uh, this is just nonsense. You know, if you have some method, you can either uh, investigate in scientific terms, means what is the method supposed to do, and you check whether it does that or not. If it does, it's not, uh, if it doesn't do it, okay, then you can forget about it. But if you say, no, no, uh, that's just mythology, that can't work, without examining, that's not scientific at all. Still, I find that uh, from time to time. Uh, but, uh, okay, I don't care much. I, I rather go to the scientists who are interested to actually examine. And then if their normal scientific work to find out, does it work or not? Right. Very reasonable. So what has been your main focus of research within Agni Yotra? So one, one important thing is the effects of Agni Yotra. The effects of Agni Yotra on our environment, on plant growth, agriculture, on human health, animal health. That is one big uh, uh, subject, the effects of Agni Hotta. The second thing would be, um, how does that whole thing work? You know, what are the underlying mechanisms of Agni Hotta? Under other topic, and a little bit more complicated, but those are very interesting. So, so what are some of the ways that your research with Agni Yotra has validated ancient Vedic texts on the topic? We um, we have examined um, quite a lot about the effects of Agni Hotta on the environment. You know, there are different kinds of pollution of the atmosphere. One is biological, one is chemical, one is physical. So biological pollution is uh, by harmful uh, bacteria, harmful fungi, harmful uh, viruses. And uh, that is a very simple experiment that had been done several times. The first time, 1981, maybe, in Poland, at the university there. People have a petri dish open uh, with a nutrient solution, and they keep it open for 10 minutes, for example, then close it. And they do that before acne hotter, after acne hotter. And then they let the bacteria grow and see how much bacteria were there in the air. And before acne hotter, you see a lot, a lot, a lot of bacteria. And if you do the same thing after acne hotter, uh, the number is much less, uh, you know, the count is minus 70%, minus 80%, minus 90%, by just one acne hotter. And if you would do room, you would see there are no pathogenic bacteria left in the room. That's amazing. So, so that is the first thing. And then uh, I talked about biological, um, physical pollution, chemical pollution. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, harmful chemicals, but now most people are concentrating on uh, SOx, sulfur oxide, and NOx, uh, nitrogen oxides. And we did one experiment at uh, North Maharashtra University here in India and could show that there's a reduction on both of these uh, chemicals um, if you perform acne hotter just once. Immediately after acne hotter, there's a small increase, but then it goes down. The same also with, with physical pollution, that's particulate matter, and it comes down uh, by approximately 40% just by performing acne hotter once. And now, the air pollution is a big problem. Now here I'm in India, and in big cities in India, it's really, you can't hardly breathe. Delhi, in the moment, is the most polluted city of the world. Uh, schools are closing, uh, people are advised, you know, to not go outside so much and so on. But what can you do? People have to still uh, somehow live. So we are uh, planning an experiment with daily air, uh, and not perform acne hotter only once, but perform it for, say, one week and see how these uh, high concentrations of, uh, how they go down. Yes. Okay. So what have you found with Agniotra's effects on water? On water, we have done different uh, experiments. Um, one is uh, they have taken Agni Hotra ash, put that in a glass cylinder, and uh, poured polluted water from whatever through this uh, acne hotter ash. 
and the water was really, really uh, bad before the color was uh, uh, not nice, odor was very bad, uh, very high conductivity means a lot of salts, high concentration of toilet, uh, total salt, hardness wood, high oxygen, oxygen demand and uh, chemical oxygen demand was very high, and uh, bacteria in it. And after the water was pouring through this uh, column of aquifer ash, the water was very pure. It was uh, turned into drinking quality water. That was one thing. Then uh, there was one, uh, they had a bore well, and uh, the water was highly uh, saline and alkaline, so they could not make use of it, drink it, they couldn't give it to the plants or to animals. The pH was 9.5 and salinity was 1150 parts per million. What they did is they performed acne hotter next to the bore well and added acne hotter ash from time to time to the bore well also. And after only six months, the pH came down to 7.2, which is nearly neutral, and salinity was half. So uh, the water was uh, then portable. They could uh, use it for the plant. They could use it for the animal. So what about uh, Agni Yotra's effect on soil pollution? On soil? Uh, see, one thing is soil is so important and people are aware of uh, the importance of soil. And uh, I want to quote one. Uh, that is a, a, an old Sanskrit text. Uh, uh, from around uh, 1500 before Christ, from a Sanskrit text. It said, upon this handful of soil, our survival depends. Husband it, and it will grow our food, our fuel, and our shelter, and surround us with beauty. Abuse it, and the soil will collapse and die, taking humanity with it. And that is exactly, uh, actually the situation in which we are now. And this abuse is happening, and actually the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, says that now one third of the world's soil has already been degraded. And if you continue, especially agricultural practices like they're common now, uh, con like that, then the uh, global amount of arable soil in 2015 will be only one quarter of the level of 1600s and that means we will, there's no chance that we could grow a food for the people at that time. Only, only 25% of the useful arable soil would be left. That no means enough to feed, feed the population of the earth. So then that takes us to what is research saying about Agni Yotra's effect on soil? Yeah, we have to rejuvenate the soil first. Uh, of microorganisms uh, like viruses, bacteria, fungi, algae, and so on. And thus a healthy microflora and microfauna is created and the use of Agni Yotra ash. And that uh, has been shown. Uh, for example, one experiment done at some college in India, they added 1% of Agni Hotta ash to the soil. Uh, you have one soil, you add one kilo of Agni Hotta ash. And what they showed is that uh, there was an increase in nitrogen fixing bacteria and phosphorus solubilizing bacteria, both very useful bacteria in the soil. And at the same time, this acne hotta ash helped to control fungal flora. Means the beneficial microbes, uh, they are supported, their growth is multiplied, but the harmful uh, uh, microbes, they are controlled. It's fascinating. Then there was another interesting uh, experiment done in uh, some part uh, East India. They had a very alkaline soil. The pH uh, was nearly 10, 9.86. What they did is they uh, divided the plot in uh, the land into three plots, 
One plot, they continued uh, normal conventional chemical farming. One plot, they used uh, organic farming with vermicompost and the third vermicompost plus agnotra ash. And then after one season, uh, the pH of the conventional farming, chemical farming was still the same, 9.86. Uh, the vermicompost, organic with vermicompost, went down a little bit. It was 9.06, but with Agnihotra, it came down to 7.67, means nearly neutral in just one season. Soil scientists, um, to whom I showed this uh, result, they said that's normally not possible. So, what Agnihotra and Agnihotra ash? Now, People might think, okay, if you use Agnihotra, means the PA comes down. But there's another example that was in Poland. There was one farm, the pH was 4.4, very acidic. And the government agricultural engineer said, forget this, uh, forget that, nothing will grow here. Uh, still the people tried with Agnihotra and adding Agnihotra ash. And uh, they got very good results, everything grew, and uh, on the tested the soil, the um, pH of approximately 7 also. So it actually brought balance to the pH and made it neutral. Balance is nature. It brings nature back to harmony. And uh, that is uh, different from what any cats would do. So what have been some other tests done on, um, on the topic of agriculture and plant growth? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are a lot of uh, simple tests, which everybody, even uh, in schools that has been done, uh, you use uh, germination of seeds. That's very uh, easy to do. We just take some plate, um, paper towel, uh, some water, and uh, add some seeds. You do this with Agnihotra ash and without Agnihotra ash, yeah? And you see the difference. Now, uh, people could say, okay, okay but any ash uh, has some nutrients, so maybe it's just because uh, of the nutrients of any ash. So what we uh, also do, we compare with some other ash, uh, like burning the same substances, a little bit cow dung, a little bit ghee, a little bit rice, uh, and still there's a big difference between uh, the, uh, the seeds, the germination uh, of uh, when you use Agnihotra ash and you use this other ash, which we call, uh, call control ash. How would you apply the ashes to the seeds before planting? We just add the ash to the water. We just mix the water a little bit of Agnihotra ash. Okay. And you've seen you've seen a lot of results in the growth of the plants using Agniotra ash. Yeah, the, you know that is such a simple test, so uh, you can easily even do it at home. Or uh, we have seen uh, school children who have done that, and uh, always you get these good results. Of course, it has been published a number of times also, but that is a very simple thing. Uh, and and then uh, there were more complicated uh, experiments also. One is the in the Tamil Nadu Cultural University. Uh, they co compare the yield and the quality of uh, different um, flowers like rose and carnation. And then also of cabbage, potato, and then compared organic farming, organic farming with Agnihotra, and conventional farming. And the result always yield was higher with Agnihotra, and also quality was better and uh, less uh, problem, and especially with flowers, and flowers uh, like roses, they are normally grown in greenhouses, and in greenhouses, uh, the bigger problem is a mold, and with Agnihotra, you know, this problem could totally be controlled. Then uh, you got more, more flowers, the stalk length was higher, uh, the flower diameter was better, number of flower, flowers per year, a bit, uh, and also the shelf life increased. Some other university, other university, they uh, compared um, Agnihotra ash with other organic fertilizer, production of grass, 
and uh, they saw the quantity is increased if you use like hot ash, the oil content increases, and also the disease resistance is higher. And this uh, higher oil content is in, uh, interesting because um, that leads uh, to the question of nutrient content of plants. And nutrient content of plants increases uh, if you use Agni Horta and Agni Horta ash, which has been shown in some uh, tests of uh, Warsaw in University in Poland. So for the control of mold and disease, is the Agni Yotra ash applied topically as like a foliar spray? Uh, two things were done. Uh, one thing is uh, Agni Horta was performed in the greenhouse. I think that's the main thing. And second thing, um, Agni Horta ash is added to water. You mix a little bit of Agni ash to water and you use it as a foliar spray, yes. Very interesting. Okay, uh, I just want to mention one more thing, uh, that is biodiversity. Uh, bi biodiversity is one big problem also. For example, uh, recently a study showed that within 25 years, that's a short time, in Germany, um, the insect popula population was reduced by 75%. 75% uh, less insects within 25 years involved in this said this is like ecological Armageddon. So that's really a big, big problem. And of course that means if there are no insects, the birds have problems, uh, they don't have food and so on and so on. What we have found is if you perform Agni Hot regular in a place, biodiversity increases a lot. We have seen it uh, in the place where I am now here in uh, Homotherapy Goshala in Maheshwa, uh, that uh, the invertebrates in the uh, river, they are much higher, the content is much higher than in uh, the stations, control stations upstream and downstream. Also, we have seen here are many more butterflies than in places uh, some kilometers away. So that is one big, one big uh, difference. Also, the impact of Agni Horta and regular performance uh, here in this area. Uh, this was also observed in one university. In India. They performed Agni Horta for their plants, and then they saw, oh, there are suddenly uh, some medicinal plants coming by itself. They were not planted. And also they saw m many more birds, different varieties of birds and so on, after they start with this Homa, Agni Hatra homotherapy. Those sound like amazing results. So what about Agni Yotra in the realm of human health? What is some of the research showing? Um, there are a lot of re reports on uh, the effect of Agni Hatra on human health. And um, there's a few systematic studies. One uh, systematic study was on stress levels of people. Actually, it was done uh, twice. It was done once in Moscow, where pe people came for Agni Hotta for two weeks, uh, always e on the evening. Um, so they didn't perform Agni Hotta themselves. They just came, uh, somebody else did Agni Hotta. They ju were just sitting. And there was a, a clear reduction in uh, stress levels and a, in depression level, which is a big problem in Moscow. Moscow is a very polluted city also. So that was one result. Then there was at one uh, medical university in Santiago de Chile. Uh, that was quite interesting. Uh, and they uh, used, uh, they um, asked uh, students before a uh, very difficult exam, you know, studying medicine is quite difficult and the exams are very hard. So people are very stressed. So they checked 100 students for their stress level by um, analyzing their saliva. And, uh, you know, the, the content of cortisol shows stress level. And out of these 100 uh, students, all had high stress levels, they selected uh, the 30, which the highest level of stress, and um, made two groups of 15 students each. Then they invited these students 
for some Tai Chi class and said, okay, that will help you to get uh, your stress reduced. Um, so the, they did their Tai Chi, and yes, their stress level went down a little bit. The second group, they also did Tai Chi, but what these students did not know, next to the Tai Chi class, Agnihotra was performed. Significant difference, the stress level of those students where Agnihotra was performed next door uh, went down considerably more. So that was quite an interesting study because it was double blind. So that was quite good. We, of course, if you sit to uh, next to Agniota, the effect will be more. And if you perform it yourself, the Agniota, the effect will be best. But we're still discussing how we can uh, do that in a scientific test so that the uh, placebo effect can be eliminated. But interesting it was. Now, then there were, was some uh, study in the Indian Army a long time back, uh, where and these soldiers they uh, suffered from high stress also. And the study uh, examined all physiological parameters, and Agni Horta had a very uh, very good effect on these soldiers also. So these were the studies done. Then there was one incident which was really shocking the whole nature uh, the whole nation in, that was uh, the big catastrophe of Bhopal in 1984 when uh, this union carbide factory exploded and methyl isocyanide gas leaked and tens of thousands of people died there where was this again? This was in India? That was in Bhopal in India. Bhopal is in Madhya yeah. Pradesh. That's not far away from where I stay in the moment. It is in the central, in central India. And uh, at that time, you know, it's still considered as one of the biggest catastrophes, industrial catastrophes uh, of our time. Because really tens of thousands of people uh, died. So it is on a level with Chernobyl and Fukushima. What happened is that in the families where Agni Hotta was performed daily, none of the members were, uh, was affected. So it uh, looks like Agni Hotta protective armor for all these family members. That was big news at that time all over India. It's fascinating. So the question that I think a lot of us have at this point is, you know, what are the underlying mechanisms of this? How does this work? Yes, that's a very good question. <clears throat> and I have to say, uh, modern science is just at the beginning of understanding that. So uh, one thing is, uh, I t uh, told you that acne hot ash germination, uh, germination of seeds and also Agni Hotta helps to purify water. Now, in to exclude, is it just uh, any ash, would any ash do the same thing? Oh, we always had a test uh, uh, with what I call control ash. That is, we um, use the same ingredients, cow dung, ghee, and rice, burned it, also in some copper vessel, but not the Agni Hotta shape, but also copper because the copper could have some catalytic properties in the combustion process. So we got some uh, ash also, and we call it control ash, and do application of water, uh, germination of seeds, um, growing plants. We always also use this control ash. And uh, there's always a difference. There's a difference between the effect of Agni Hotta ash and the effect of control ash. Now, that is the first question now, in order to understand why this difference. Um, what is the difference between control ash? With chemical analysis, and there was not a big difference between these two ashes. Um, so, I the, the answer is not um, in the field of chemistry. So we did other experiments like uh, infrared absorption 
to develop some difference. <clears throat> so that might be able to explain the different uh, results. There was thing this was done a long time ago in Eastern Europe that was quite interesting. Um, a water in some aquarium, Agnihota was uh, performed next to the aqu aquarium. And the, what they measured is uh, the magnetic uh, property, magnetic permeability of the water uh, before Agnihota and after Agnihota. And it showed this magnetic permeability, which shows how much of mm, uh, some magnet go field goes water. Uh, that was changed considerably if you perform acne water. That means magnetic properties of water are changed. And that's quite interesting because uh, we know that our body consists uh, to high percentage, maybe 70% or more, of water. And if you can take uh, properties of the water are very important to control chemical processes in the cells. So that means if these magnetic properties change, then the functioning of these cells also will be affected. So that could to some extent explain uh, why we have these healing effects with Agnihota, why plants grow better, and so on. So that Agnihota and Agnihota ash helps to purify water. So first thing is we added Agnihota ash to water, uh, water got purified. Then we just kept water in a, some uh, container open next to Agnihota, water gets purified. So we could say Agnihota fumes, first was the effect of Agnihota ash. Then we closed the bottle and kept it next to Agnihota. So no Agnihota ash, no fumes, still the water got purified. That was quite interesting. So it means there must be some energy field of Agnihota which helped the water. Then the next question, of course, is what kind of energy field is it? Normally, if we think of energy, we think of electromagnetic energy fields. So what we did is we kept some of the bottles closed in some metal container. And metal in an excess Faraday cage means it does not let electromagnetic waves pass. So we kept uh, more than 20 uh, such bottles in an Agni Hotter room for five days. Uh, half of it were in metal containers, half of it were uh, just uh, in the, the bottles were just kept there. And we compared the uh, reduction in uh, pathogenic bacteria, for example, and compared uh, all the bottles got uh, better results compared with the, the bottles kept in. Um, but there was practically no difference between those bottles, bottles which were kept in metal containers and those which were just uh, sitting out, uh, out there. That means that the metal container which block electromagnetic waves, they didn't do much to the Agni Hotter energy. That means that the Agni Hotter energy uh, range must go electromagnetic range. So that is quite an interesting field and that leads us to the question of course if it's not electromagnetic what then? And that reminds us of uh, the Vedic Tana energy, maybe it's kind of Tana energy, uh, but we can't uh, say and we can't measure yet. The only thing which we can measure is the effect is there could be due to electromagnetic waves. So that is quite an interesting result. One other interesting result is we kept distilled water in an Agni Hotter room, in a couple of bottles in Agni water in the lab. And after five days, we took the water from the Agni Hotter room back to the lab, added bacteria. E. coli bacteria. And both waters were uh, distilled water, no bacteria, of course. And then we checked the growth of bacteria. You know, after 24 hours, the number was uh, 375. Uh, the water in the Agni room, you know, after five days, 
it was less than what uh, the other water had already after one day. So it means just by keeping water in, in a closed bottle, somehow the water gets influenced and bacterial growth in this water is inhibited uh, to a very great extent. So these are the things which we have seen, the things which show that Acne Horta has a profound effect on energy level and also on water quality. Still, there's a lot of scope for more scientific research. Going on to do that, hopefully more and more scientists will uh, join these efforts and it would be great if more also from the West, or especially from the US, would get interested and uh, do some experiments on their own. We do not expect anybody to believe in it, just do your own experiments and then you will see. I think that's fair. Yeah. So you, you touched on this earlier in different ways of your describing Agniotra's effects on these major causes of concern such as pollution and human health. But what do you see as the promise that Agniotra has to help solve a lot of the world's major issues right now? The, of course, uh, there's a lot of major issues of the, um, in this world. And one of them is the World Health. And there's a one interesting study of the World Health Organization say that every year more than 9 million people die of air pollution alone. And if you add uh, soil pollution, which leads to soil, uh, pollution of the food, that results in environmental pollution uh, being one of the major causes for people dying. And uh, the percentage of uh, pollution-related deaths in uh, some countries is as high as 20 to 25 percent. That is, for example, the case in India. In the United States and in Europe, uh, the percentage is between 5 and 10 percent, which is still if 5 or 10 percent of people's People just die because of pollution. It, mass performance of acne water will help. Um, but what we can do is, you know, that is in the of every individual, we can just start performing acne water ourselves. We do not have uh, to wait till uh, uh, And the other big challenge is uh, soil health. I mentioned that. Um, if Farming would continue like it does uh, nowadays. Uh, uh, 30 more years, the year 2050, only one quarter of the soil which we had uh, would be left of usable soil. Means no way uh, the humidity could be fed. Now, most concentration is on the subject of climate change. And climate change for most people just means CO2. Uh, but CO2 is just one aspect of the problem, and uh, we are facing the pollution of our entire environment, it means air, water, and soil. And we do not claim that Acne Hotra uh, can solve all these problems in a short time. But the good thing is, whoever starts Acne Hotra, he will be able to create a healthy micro environment uh, around his own place people join, then this area will be will get larger. We, in this way, we can help bring nature back to harmony. I love it. That's a great promise. That's very optimistic. So where can people find out more about Agni Yotra? Uh, in US, it is uh, Agni Yotra org. Then we have homotherapy.org and homafarming.org again. So where can people find out more about your work? The scientific results you can find on uh, the German website, which is called Homa Therapie, but uh, it is spelled uh, German. So it's H-O-M-A-T-H-E-R-A-P-I-E. -E. So instead of Y, it is I. German website, and uh, on the German website, uh, you find all the results uh, which I was talking about now. Well, Dr. Ulrich Burke, 
It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast today. We very much appreciate you taking the time to come and speak with us. Your research with Agniotra has been extremely fascinating to listen to. Is there anything else you would like to say before we go? Yeah. See, uh, I'm always happy if uh, there are more scientists interested to study the subject. So those people who are interested, they can contact me on the web page, which I just mentioned. Uh, there is some contact uh, form and uh, also the um, email address is given. So please contact me either on this contact form or through email. We do have listeners in Germany as well as all around the world. Please contact Dr. Ulrich Burke if you wish to discuss any of the matters in this podcast. And thank you very much, Dr. Burke, for speaking on our podcast today. Namaskar. Okay, namaskar. Dr. Ulrich Burke has been performing Agniotra for over 40 years, and he's a scientist, he's a researcher, he works with scientists, and they are proving that this Agniotra has beneficial effects on water, on air, on soil, on biological diversity. What we're seeing these days in this example, as well as in many others, is the scientific validation using Western science of ancient Vedic principles and practices. Thanks for listening.